Welcome everybody. In this Python tutorial, we're going to go over the round function, the floor function, the ceiling function, and the truncate function. The first thing we want to do is import the math module. We're going to need that for the floor, ceiling, and truncate. Now let's move on to our first example using the round function. We're going to use a print to display our rounded numbers to the screen. And inside the print, we're going to call up our round function. And inside the round function round brackets, it takes two arguments, the number you want to round and the number of digits or decimal places you want to round to. So let's use our num1, which is pi to six digits, and then a comma. And for the second argument for this first example, let's just round to two decimal places. Okay, we select this and run it. We can see over here in the console, we get pi to two digits. Let's go over a few more examples, and you're going to notice that this round function follows the normal rules for rounding. So for our next example, let's just say you want to round it to three decimal places. So let's put in a three for our second argument. Select it and run it, and you can see we get 3.142, and you can see here the third digit was a one, but since the following number is a five, it rounds up and becomes 3.142. Now let's say we want to round it to four decimal places. We just change that second argument to a four, select it and run it, and we get 3.1416. And as you can see, that number was a five, but since the following digit is a nine, it rounds up and we get 3.1416. Now just a reminder, if you're using the spider IDE and you want additional information on a function, you can just click on it like that and then hit command I. And you can see there we get the information for the round function, okay? Moving on to our floor function. The floor and ceiling functions are simple concepts. However, they can be just a little bit tricky to explain. So we're gonna use our number line here in some of our floor and ceiling examples to help us explain. So the floor function returns the largest integer less than or equal to x. Now notice that it says integer, and you can think of an integer as a whole number or a number that is not a fraction or a decimal. So for our first example, we're going to use this number here, 5.99. So again, let's use a print to display our results using the floor function. Inside the print, let's use the math module, a dot to access the floor function. And then inside the round brackets for the floor function, let's put in our number, which is 5.99. The variable name is num2. Okay, now before we run this, let's try and figure out what this will be. So if we go back to our definition here, the floor returns the largest integer less than or equal to x, which is in this case 5.99. So if we go down to our number line and let's just put our cursor right about where 5.99 would be, that would be right about there. So the first thing we know is that it's less than or equal to the number. So that means we need to go this way on the number line, okay? But you also have this criteria, which says the largest integer that's less than. So the largest integer that's less than 5.99, if we go this way on the number line, is five, okay? Now you could say, well, four and three and two are less than, x or our number 5.99 but we want the largest okay so in that case 4 3 and 2 or anything less than will not apply we want the largest number that is less than the number okay so again we're right about here on the number line almost right at 6 we know that the criteria is less than 5.99 so we have to go this way on the number line we know it has to be an integer which is again like a whole number or a number with no decimal places Okay, so we come to five, and as we said, we could go farther down on the number line, but it has to be the largest integer, less than, okay? Okay, so having said that, let's go ahead and run our code. And by kind of working that out on the number line, we figured out that the answer should be five. So if we run this, let's hope we get five over here in the console, okay? And we do. Okay, so for our next example, what if you are working with a negative number? 
So let's go ahead and plug in our negative number, negative 5.5. And let's try and work this out on the number line. Okay, so again, we go back to our definition, the largest integer less than or equal to the number, negative 5.5. Negative 5.5 is right about here on the number line. So we know that the floor has to be less than x, so it has to be less than negative 5.5. Now again, when you say less than on the number line, you have to go this way to the left. But remember, you have to throw in this criteria, the largest integer. If we're here on the number line at about 5.5, it's less than negative 5.5. We have to go to the first largest integer to the left. So six is an integer and it is the largest. Now again, you could go to negative seven or negative eight, but negative six is larger. So that should be your answer. So let's select our code and run it and we get negative six as we expected, okay? So if you ever want a better intuitive sense of what the floor is doing, you can use this number line to help. Let's move on to the ceiling and you're gonna see that the ceiling is very similar to the floor, except that you go the other way. So the definition for the ceiling is it returns the smallest integer greater than or equal to x. Okay, so for our first example, we went ahead and just used the same number as before. We used 5.99, let's use a print, to display, call the math module, use a dot to access the seal, which is short for ceiling. Inside the ceiling round brackets, we wanna put our number. So let's just put the variable name num4 for 5.99. Now again, before we run this, let's see if we can figure out what we think it should be. So if we go to 5.99 on the number line, it's right about here. And in this case, it has to be greater than or equal to that number, and it has to be the smallest integer. Okay, so the first integer that is greater than 5.99 is six. Now, if we tried to use seven or eight, that won't work because six is the smallest, okay? So the ceiling for 5.99 should be six. Let's go ahead and select our code and run it and we get back six, that's good. Now let's move on to an example using a negative number. So inside our print, using the math module and the ceiling function, let's change this from num4 to num5. And again, let's try and figure out what this should be using the number line. So if we go to negative 5.5 on the number line, that puts us right about here. We know that the ceiling has to be greater than or equal to x. So greater than a negative number on the number line goes this way to the right, but it also has to be the smallest integer. Okay, so if we go this way on the number line, that takes us to negative five. And to meet the criteria for the smallest integer, we would stay here at negative five. And you might think, oh, well, negative four is a smaller number, but it's not because we're dealing with negatives. Negative five is actually a smaller integer than negative four. Now, of course, when you're dealing with positive, four is less than five, but when you're dealing with negatives, negative five is smaller than negative four. So negative five meets the criteria of being greater than or equal to negative 5.5, and it is the smallest integer. Okay, so let's go ahead and select our code. And to find the ceiling for negative 5.5, as we said, by using the number line, this should be negative five. Let's run it, okay? And you can see over here in the console, we get negative five, that's good. Now let's move on to our truncate examples. To display the results using the truncate, let's use a print, and let's access our math module, and then the truncate function. And inside the truncate function round brackets, let's use our first example, which is 5.99. We're just using the same numbers and use the variable name number six. Okay, now before we run this, let's go ahead and select our truncate function and hit command I. And you can see over here in the help section, you get a little bit of information about the truncate function. I like to think of the truncate function as just cutting off the decimal part of a number. Okay, so in this example, we have 5.99. Using the truncate function, we should just get back five for our output. Let's select our code and run it. And you can see over here in the console, we get five. Now let's change our argument for the truncate function to use negative 5.5. So let's put in our variable name num7. And again, if this just cuts off the decimal part, we should get back negative five. Select it and run it. And we get back negative five, okay? Now, one more thing that you can do, which is somewhat similar to truncate, not exactly, but somewhat similar, 
is if you have a float number, for example, and you just want to turn that into an integer or a whole number or a number that's not a fraction or a decimal, let's show you an example of how you can do that. Okay, so let's use a print and let's put in the number 5.99 as we've been using all along. Now if we want to turn that into an integer, we can just cast that as an int. So let's type out int, and put that in the round brackets, and when we select this and run it, we should get back 5. Okay? So 5.99 cast as an int gives you 5. Okay, so that's all we have for this Python tutorial on the round function, floor function, ceiling function, and truncate functions. We'll be doing many more Python tutorials in the near future. Join us for those, and we'll see you next time.